friends, and welcome to today's 10-minute painting lesson. We're going to begin here today, as we generally do with our large, damp, square-headed brush, and I'm applying a good amount of titanium white to the horizon and then blending upwards. From there, I'm going to grab a little bit of primary yellow and titanium white and apply this mixture to roughly where I think my sun will be. Then I'm going to go back to my palette, grab an orange, which is simply a mixture of primary yellow, primary red, and titanium white, and I'm going to apply that around our initial application of yellow. Then I'm grabbing some pink, which is a mixture of our titanium white and our primary red. A lot of color listing here. And I'm going to apply that on top of the orange. Then I'm going to blend all of them together fairly softly. The goal here is to render a smooth gradient from one to the next, one very much void of strokes or brushwork. And that really generally occurs when we apply too much pressure with our brush. So if we're fairly soft with our application, if our pigments are still fairly wet, which they should be because we're using a damp brush, all should be well. Now from there, I'm going to switch over to my <laughs> uh, purple on my palette, and you'll also notice that there is probably a snowblower going in the background of this audio. I live in Canada, it is extremely snowy, and filming without one of them in the audio of these is incredibly difficult this time of year. But with that being said, I added some purple to the tops of the painting, we created a little bit of a vignette, and we blended downwards. Then I'm taking some orange with my medium-sized square-headed brush, and I'm adding in some clouds. Some of the orange is very much blended and dissipates into the background, while other orange is very dominant, and I did this to instill a little bit of depth and show that there are different levels of clouds, some closer to us and some farther away. From there, I'm going to take my larger square-headed brush yet again, and I'm going to create a base layer for our snow. And as you'll notice, it's actually quite dark. It's quite gray. It has some blue. It has a little bit of purple in it as well. and I'm using this as opposed to a classic white for the snow because snow is not actually just white. It's really a reflection of all of the pigments that surround it. So with a sky full of pinks and purples, the snow is also going to adopt a lot of those colors. And I'm not going with a very bright pink or purple initially because I want to build up a lot of depth. And depth is built by adding highlights on top of mid-tones, on top of dark tones. It's about layering and building a foundation. So we started with our dark tone, and now I'm adding in some mid-tones and highlights on top of it, some reflected light from the sky down onto the snow. So as you can see here, we've done a little bit of that. I used a bit of texture to ensure that it looked like there were some areas of snow that were really catching a lot of light, and then there are dips that kind of recede back into the darker pigments. But we'll get back into that in a little bit. Right now we're switching over to our trees, and for that I'm using a smaller square-headed brush. So we're using this because it can hold a good amount of paint, but it can also render very sharp edges because it innately has fairly sharp edges as well. When people, when we're beginning painting, I think a lot of us think to use the smaller round-headed brushes for the more delicate detailed work. However, a lot of them do have a bit of a rounded feathered edge, which doesn't lend itself well to sharp edges. And that's really why I like to use this brush in this scenario. Now, it's still damp, so I'm able to really extend the paint fairly far and render these trees with a lot of consistency. But with that being said, in terms of color, what we're using here, I'm really just using a bit of Mars black with a tiny bit of burnt umber and a little bit of primary blue as well. That way, we get the reflected blue light, we get a natural bark color, but it's also fairly dark because the light, it's very far away, it's in the distance, and we're almost just going to get silhouettes of these trees. We just have a little bit of interjected color to give it a bit of life and depth. Now, also in regards to the trees, the trees in the foreground are very large, and they are very prominent. They go up into the top of the canvas, where the ones in the back of the painting, they get very small. They're the same types of trees, they're all generally the same height, but because of perspective, they look smaller and smaller as they get farther and farther away. It's another way of showing an instigating depth within your painting, and it's also going to create a leading line, because if you follow the trees from the back of the painting, 
painting up into the front, it's a very natural way for the eyes to move and to get to your main subject and main subject area at the front of the painting. So these are all just little things to keep in mind when you're working on your painting. If you want to instill a lot of depth in your painting and you want to use trees, consider working on a tree line that doesn't work horizontally in the background of the painting, but one that rather moves forward in the painting, where the trees get progressively larger. And as they get larger and closer, you can incorporate more detail and make them even more interesting. So these again are just more things to consider. Now here I'm roughly working in some very messy brush strokes in the back just to fill in some areas. We'll go back in and we'll clean that up fairly shortly, but I just wanted to show that as the trees move farther away you saw less and less detail and all of the branches are kind of moving on top of each other, so there are less openings and you see less sky in detail. Then I'm throwing a little bit of grass down into that bottom area, just areas that are sticking out, all of the grass is different, it's moving in different ways, but I'm also then switching to the older square headed brush and I'm kind of just dabbing in some additional little details and areas and areas that I think are going to be very full and we're not going to see too much through them. It's going to give it a very natural look and the change in texture gradually will also be fairly interesting in the painting. Here I'm also adding some grass with that same brush. So from there, I'm actually going to go back in and incorporate a little bit of that in the middle ground. That way we have a good transition and it's not just a, simply a hard cut from one brush and one stroke style into the other. There's a, an area that kind of incorporates both of them and it feels much more natural. Then I'm going to incorporate some light and mid-tones into the snow into the foreground. Here I'm using a bit of a pink, I'm using a bit of a blue, and of course they both have a good amount of titanium white in them as well. This is just the light that's coming through from the background in these areas. And I'm applying a lot of it with this horizontal brush stroke so it's very messy. That's going to leave a good amount of texture as well just to keep it fairly interesting and captivating in the painting because I didn't want the snow to be all too flat. I wanted to give it a little bit of additional depth and interest as well. Then I left a little bit of an opening in a dark spot in there that can kind of be perceived as a tire track or a path in the road as well. So we're just looking for very small ways to incorporate additional detail and interest in this painting. Then I'm going back to my trees in the foreground and I'm going to begin adding some additional branches into those as well. Now, the more branches you add into these, generally the better. It's going to look much more realistic, it's going to look much more interesting, and it's going to diversify your trees to a great extent. And these are all very important in your painting. There is a stage where you can add too many, but I wouldn't worry about that. I'd kind of just keep adding until maybe you feel there's maybe one too many, and then you can kind of just paint over it and take it out. But you don't know until you try. So that's another big lesson, I think, in painting that I'd highly implore you to keep in the back of your head. And that is keep going until you feel it's slightly too much, then work regressively take back, paint over it until you have exactly what you want. That way you're not always thinking and looking at the painting. What if I did that? What if I added slightly more of that? That way you know definitively that it is done in your mind. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of debate regarding when a painting is actually finished, but I think it's really when you're happy with it, and I think that's the best way to kind of get there. Now, I know this lesson has been a little bit ridiculous with all of the color listing at the beginning and the snowblower in the background and all of that, but I really do enjoy this painting. I really do like it a lot, and I hope that you're having a lot of fun as well. Right now, I'm kind of fixing things up. I'm adding in additional highlights. When we added in our first layer of trees, the pigments were kind of blending with the background colors, and because of the water on the brush, it was semi-transparent. So I'm going back in, and I'm adding in some additional heavier pigments to really show exactly what we initially intended it to be. Sometimes a couple of layers will really make the painting and your main subjects pop so much more. 
But with that being said, we are coming to the end of the painting. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave them in the comments. I am here to help. I truly hope you enjoyed. I hope you feel like you've learned something. If you'd actually like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. I do list all of the paints and materials in the description of this video as well. And if you'd like hour long lessons just like this, where you also get to see the color palettes and when I'm mixing with water, all of the things we don't have time for in these lessons, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below as well. So thank you so much for watching. I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. And above all, as always, stay creative.